are you doing? Huh? Maybe shows your socks. Ooh, shark socks. Barracuda. Ooh, nice. Ow. Okay, is that a TRD Pro? <laughs> hey YouTube, Untamed here. So currently I feel as though I am the richest I've ever been in my entire life. And guess what? It's not financially. I'm actually making far less than I've been making in the last decade. So for those of you who don't know, I mean, you've seen me probably move around a different, a few different houses. A lot of you thought I was in a witness protection program, but truth is, yeah, I've been in the military. I was active duty Air Force. I was a, I was a major in the Air Force. I'm now just part-time in the guard, a weekend warrior, if you will. Um, but previously I was actually stationed out in DC. So I'll let you look it up as public knowledge, how much an 04, an Air Force major makes living in DC. The locality pay of actually living in DC is, is, is pretty, pretty huge. And when you combine that with 04 pay, it was pretty exceptional. I was very happy with how much I was earning out there. It's a lot. And by comparison to what I'm making now in little old Wyoming, not working full time for the Air Force anymore, I'm making a lot less. But I can honestly tell you, I'm the happiest I've ever been and I'm the richest I've ever been. And I'm gonna explain why in this video. We actually posted our house for sale. About four and a half months ago, we posted our house for sale we had it on the market for about three and a half months. We had a lot of showings, a lot of positive feedback. We priced it $30,000 below comps in order to try to move it, and we didn't get a single offer. Obviously, times are tough right now. Times are tough, interest rates are garbage, so we're not totally shocked by that. But when we put our house up on the market, we purposely downsized our vehicles, the fleet here. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that having this 2006 GX470 and the 2021 Tundra over there is a kind of a smaller fleet for us. And honestly, financially speaking, it's been really nice. It's been really nice getting used to this. Obviously not having a car payment, it has been a huge piece of the equation. And we've kind of really grown to appreciate and, and get, and we've gotten used to it and we really like it. So this kind of made me think like, you know, why, why is it that we constantly push ourselves to get that next, that next vehicle, that next house? And we're, we're guilty of it. I've been guilty of it in the last decade, but it's not truly important. And that's the message I'm trying to send in this video. You know, we, we're constantly in this pursuit, this rat race to get that next vehicle, that next house, that next best thing. We're constantly doing it. If I, if I can only get that next promotion, I'll be happy. If I can only get that next rank, I'll be happy. I'll be successful and people will, will think I'm successful. If I just earn my PhD, people will think I'm successful. You know, and I did that. I did that throughout the last decade. And guess what? It doesn't truly matter. Obviously, they're great accolades and, and, and they're wonderful things, but that's not what truly matters, at least to me, guys. Honestly, these things right here, that Tundra over there, it can go away tomorrow. The GX here, it can go away tomorrow. Even the house here, this can go away tomorrow. We could be in a smaller home. We could be in an apartment. What truly matters is what's inside that house for me, and I really mean that. So I have four beautiful kiddos and a smoking hot wife. That's what matters to me. And that's what, that, that's what should matter to, to, to you guys too. And I think we just get so stuck with keeping up with the Joneses, right? We're so stuck on the materialistic things in life and I'm guilty of it too. Now, when I was living in DC, I would drive for about 30 minutes, get on a bus, ride that bus for about 45 minutes, take the bus to a metro, then get on the metro for about 15, 20 minutes to get to my destination, to get to my job site. That is a lot. So over an hour and a half was pretty common on a daily basis one way. Obviously partially self-inflicted. We, we wanted to live in a, a nicer home that was further away and has some property to it, not in the heart of DC. But by doing that, so much of my time was just sucked into that, right? So I would get to, I would wake up at five o'clock in the morning, get to work around, you know, 7.30 by the time you know, I left the house and all that. And then I'd get home around 6.30 or seven o'clock at night on, on, on a regular basis. And by that time, well, it's ready for bedtime for the kiddos. So I'd go to work and get home just in time to put the kids to bed. And then I would start starting my homework. I was working my PhD at the time. I was constantly pursuing that next best thing, that next, next best title or next best rank. I kept kind of prioritizing that stuff. I kept prioritizing work and prioritizing education, which I don't regret the education bit by any means, but by doing that, it just sucks so much of my time out of my life where I couldn't invest it to what truly mattered. And that was my family right there. So now that I'm done with all that, no longer chasing, chasing all that, all those things, 
I'm in a position here where I love my job. I just don't get paid nearly as much as living in DC as a major, but I love my job. I love the people I work with and I have the freedom and that's the key to it here. Having the freedom and time to actually enjoy life and enjoy it with the people you love. And that's what I've come to realize. So here I have an eight minute commute to my work. Love it. I can come home for lunch if I want to and see my kiddos. I have not missed a single cheer, cheer event, single soccer game, wrestling match. Hockey, I haven't missed a single one yet since coming back here to Wyoming. And honestly, because of those reasons, I'm the richest I've ever been. You know, it tends to be a vicious cycle for a lot of us too, right? We, we constantly work our butts off to get that next rank, get that next promotion, and then, hey, at that point, then I can buy a brand new BMW. Then I can get that new Mercedes Benz I've been wanting to get, because that will mean I'm successful. That will let people know that I'm happy and let people know I'm rich. That sends the signal. But what does that do? Once you get that new BMW, now you gotta work a little bit harder to keep up with paying that BMW off, right? So you're gonna get that next rank, next promotion, and then you're gonna work hard to pay off that BMW. And then before you know it, you're constantly trying to one-up it. And I found myself in that position too in the last decade, right? Where I constantly wanna get that next best vehicle, that next best TRD Pro, that next best Land Cruiser, multiple Land Cruisers, FJ Cruisers, but they're just things. They're just things at the end of the day. I love this Tundra here, but it can go away tomorrow and I won't skip a beat. And honestly, I think what it boils down to is having the freedom and time to actually do what you want is what allows you to feel rich. And you can easily make the argument, a good argument that, well, in order to have the time and freedom to do what you want, you need to be financially set and stable because everything costs money. That makes total sense. But I think you can actually set your parameters, right? Set your parameters and live within your means. And I think we as Americans, we suck at doing that, myself included. I always have been pretty bad at doing that, living within my means. Uh, you know, to feel happy and, and live appropriately for my family, right? So if you set your parameters, say, hey, this is how much money I'm bringing in, how much time can I really spend with my family and not divest so much effort toward my work, right? I think that is the tough nut to crack for a lot of people, right? So don't get so stuck on these materialistic things because we often, I think I accidentally come across that I'm promoting the crud out of these things and this is what makes you happy. This is what is important in life. It's not, guys. I know you don't need to hear it from me, but I just want to kind of send that message because we often get stuck in that cycle. Unfortunately, we live in a social media world where everything we see on TikTok or Instagram or YouTube, we feel like we need to emulate. Like until I have what that social media influencer has, until I have that, I won't be happy. And that's just a flawed way of thinking. But we're kind of training our kids to feel that way and think that way from day one. You know, they're constantly on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube and they're constantly seeing people flex these vehicles and it's not reality, right? That's not reality and that's not happiness, but that's kind of what we train. We train our youngsters to think that, hey, I need to work my butt off my entire life and a career in order to be happy. We don't need to do that. You know, when you look at the, the top one, 2% wealthiest people in the world, what do they drive? They drive Toyotas and Hondas. Those are the top two vehicles right there. Not Mercedes Benz, not Range Rovers, not Bentleys, but Toyotas and Hondas. I think we talked about it plenty on the channel too. Toyota Land Cruisers tend to be a crowd favorite for a lot of folks. Uh, I mean, well, for good reason. The simplicity, the simplicity of them, they're very reliable, they're very economical. You know, they're just, they're not flexing and I love that about them. So I know guys, it is easier said than done, but you don't need to chase the mighty dollar to be happy. And oftentimes you'll find yourself just wanting more. And that's, that's the beauty of greed, right? Once you get some, you want to get a little bit more and just a little bit more, and then I'll be happy. It's the beauty of greed. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> What's the old, the old saying? Mo money, mo problems, right? <laughs> People say that, and there's some truth to that, right? So if you can just try your best, and I'm working on it myself, and that's why I'm sharing this video with you, is you know, try to be happy with what you got. Right, try to be happy with the things you have in life, but most importantly, focus on what's important. And that, for me, is my family inside here. So I just want to share this with you, perhaps a video that nobody wanted or asked for, but I just want to kind of share it with you because it was on my mind this morning. Hopefully, at least a couple of you can find some value in it. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Until next time.